Welcome back to If This Is True. Today, I want to talk about metal, the metal that's built the modern world. And it's not gold, it's not oil, it's copper. No one's really talking about it. But without it, there's no electricity, no clean water, no internet, and there's definitely no green transition to net zero. <laughs> copper do we really need and what's it going to cost to get it? Because in all of these figures that Ed's given you and GB Energy is investing, there's some commodities here that they're not talking to you about. And copper is one of my favourites. You know I love science. You know I do. So copper was the first metal that humans ever mined over 10,000 years ago, you remember that from school, right? And it marked the end of the Stone Age, where we're headed back to. And it was the beginning of the first real technology, actually. Romans relied on it for plumbing, coinage, armour and tools. In fact, the very word copper comes from Cyprian, after the island of Cyprus the Roman Empire's key supply line. Now, if you fast forward to today, nothing's really changed. And we still use copper for exactly the same reasons we always did. It is one of the best and most cost-effective conductors of electricity because it doesn't rust or degrade. It lasts for decades, sometimes centuries. We know that because we dig it up. It's in everything we build, including all of your smartphones, your solar panels, submarines. Copper is everywhere. Electricity grids are woven with it. Data centers are filled with it. Cars, especially EVs, are built around it. Homes, water systems, wind turbines all need copper. And with net zero, the demand, of course, is skyrocketing, right? Skyrocketing. Isabel, remind me, we need to buy shares in copper. So Ed's so-called green energy revolution depends on copper more than any other metal, with demand increasing yeah, as you can imagine, alarmingly. EVs, for example, use between 80 and 100 kilos of copper. That's two to four times more than a petrol car. Let's look at uh, wind turbines. So they need about eight tons of copper per megawatt. Right, stay with me. Based on the UK's planned wind turbine rollout, that would add up to 400,000 tonnes of copper. And to put that in perspective, that's twice what the world's biggest copper mine in Chile produces in a year. <laughs> uh, yeah, solar farms use them as well. So about five tonnes per megawatt. Now, Ed's solar roadmap aims to increase that to up to 47 gigawatts by 2030. And then by 2050, he wants 57 gigawatts of solar power. Right. Well, that's going to be about two and a half times the amount that's kicked out by the biggest mine in the world in Chile. And we're a tiny country fighting for a very large portion of what's being mined. And, and if we want to upgrade the grid, right? Because of course, our grid can't take all of the renewable energy that Ed's building, then we'll need millions more kilometers of copper wiring. So, Let's say one to three tons of copper per kilogram. That's about right. Well, that's what AI, Grok, ChatGPT, that's kind of what they tell me. So you can see the scale of the copper requirement the UK would need on top of what we already use a year. Now, that means 
to hit net zero targets by 2050. If every country that signed up to this fantasy wants to hit net zero targets by 2050, we will need to mine more copper in the next 20 years than we have mined in all of recorded human history. <laughs> the International Energy Agency projects that copper demand will double by 2040, but other estimates say that we'll need 700 million tonnes just by 2045. Right, so copper looks good, right? Everyone jump into copper. But here's the problem. It really isn't unlimited. It's not easy to get. And we're already running out of all the easy, low-hanging fruit stuff. Bit like, a bit like we have with oil, really. Most of the highest grade deposits, all the easy stuff, we've already mined. And what's left is deeper, poorer quality and harder to reach. Meaning more digging, more blasting more chemicals, more waste, and a much higher price. New copper mines take, I don't know, 10, 20 years to open from discovery to production, and they might do it quicker. But we haven't got the kind of time we need to roll out Ed's fantasy. Copper doesn't come out of the ground ready to use. It's not like slicing into a loaf of bread, right? It's buried in rock. And often, less than 1% of copper is in the earth per tonne. And that means that for every one tonne of copper, you have to extract and process over 100 tonnes of rock. And that process is pretty brutal, right? Whilst we're saving the earth, we're blasting through mountains and forests. We do it all the time. We're crushing rock to powder using chemicals like sulfuric acid or cyanide. And these, of course, often leach out of the metal. And then we smelt them at 1,100 degrees Celsius using cold filed power. But don't worry about that. It's one of the most energy intensive and polluting industries on earth. And the waste is called tailings. And that's a toxic sludge of leftover rock, heavy metals and chemicals, often stored in open dams that leak, collapse, spill into local rivers. You can Google this stuff. It's all there for you to see. Copper mining has already devastated rivers in Peru, poisoned indigenous land in places like Arizona and polluted groundwater in the Zambia. But this is the metal we need for our green revolution to save the planet. And, um, yeah, Britain doesn't have much of its own. We import virtually all of our copper, mainly from China, Peru, Chile and the Congo. We've got a few small scale mines in Cornwall, uh, which are being explored for reopening, but that would be very expensive. Look at our cost of working in the UK, our minimum wage. So even when they reopen, the UK will still be dependent on foreign copper mined in some of the most environmentally and unfriendly and politically unstable places on earth. So when Ed talks to you about net zero infrastructure in Britain, remember that the copper isn't British, it's global. And we're outsourcing the environmental destruction so that we can pretend we've lowered our emissions. And while we're on that subject, let's talk about those workers, shall we? Because they won't be British either. All these green jobs are being outsourced to cheap labour forces. Copper mines aren't a high-tech utopia that the green lobby wants you to imagine. No, they're mostly low-tech shitholes. They're often in remote areas where wages are low, oversight is minimal and labour rights don't even exist. 
In the Congo, child labour is already rife in cobalt mines and exactly the same thing happens in copper extraction pits. In Latin America, workers face long, hard hours, often unregulated in dangerous conditions with high exposure to toxic dust and heavy metals. So it's not the utopia you're being told it is. And while these workers are risking their lives so that we can have a few windmills and solar panels that we'll all subsidise anyway, the mining industry is raking in billions of pounds. Hedge funds, pension giants, they all own huge slices of these private companies. And of course they love the net zero boom. Why do you think they push it so hard? Higher copper demand means more control, more speculation, and more profit. And whilst I'm not going to sit here and name those companies to you, do a simple Google search and it'll tell you exactly who they are. And don't talk to me about electrified mining and the future of mining is all clear because that's utter bollocks as well. Most copper mines run on diesel-powered drills, 400-tonne haul trucks, massive fossil-based processing plants. Switching all of that to electric is absolute fantasy. In fact, I had a whole video on mining. You can watch it. It's in the link below. Large-scale mining requires diesel-powered trucks, excavators, drills, none of which can currently be powered by electricity and won't be in the near future. But in summary, Batteries can't survive the extreme heat, the dust, the vibration of mine sites. Charging them takes many, many hours, which means downtime, and mining can't afford downtime. The equipment costs two to three times more than the existing equipment. And even if you did electrify it all, the manufacturing of that electric equipment still relies on coal, diesel and copper. Can you see? You're digging up copper to electrify a process that relies on copper to dig up copper. It's insane. Ah, but we can recycle it all, say the ideologues in the Guardian newspaper. No, we won't. Because copper is locked in long-term infrastructure. Buildings, grids, water systems, they all last for 50 or 100 years. The small amount of copper that does get recycled still requires intensive smelting, which leads to toxic fuels, uh, lots of energy just to do it in the first place. And recycling doesn't reduce demand, it just slightly delays that demand. So if net zero depends on an ever-growing supply of new copper, then you can't do it through recycling. And so as this demand skyrockets, we're seeing the next resource rush begin. Greenland is sitting on billions of pounds worth of copper. Yeah, mining companies are circling. Of course Trump wants to buy it. Greenland is self-governing, but not independent. And that's the key to this whole story, because polls show that Greenlanders do support independence in principle, because they see themselves as Inuit first, not Danish. And the EU, of course, oh no, they don't want anyone to touch it, because right now they control it through Denmark. Antarctica is currently protected from mining by international treaty on not touching. Antarctica comes up for review soon. And a number of nations are already hinting that they have dibs on some of the mining that could be there. So as resources dwindle everywhere else because we're digging it up, it's not a question of when Greenland or Antarctica will be mined. It's when. Ask yourself, are you really saving the planet or are we strip mining for someone else's profit? And you're being force fed that net zero will save the planet. And you're not even allowed to question it. But copper itself tells you the full story. We're demanding an impossible amount of metal. 
Using destructive processes, we can't electrify. We're buying it from countries we don't control and we're enriching corporations we can't vote for. So all, all of it for a fantasy of clean energy that still runs on blood, diesel and extra extraction. It isn't about sustainability. It's about control, compliance, and corporate consolidation. And my final thought is to say, you should really buy shares in copper before the chancellor taxes what little money you have left. What do you think? Message me below with your thoughts on copper and some of the other rubbish that you're being sold by net zero. See you next time on If This Is True.